Sisters and Brothers, season two, episode two. First of all, I want to say a massive, massive thank you to Unleashed, amazing people. Another governor in the chair. I say governor every time, but it's another governor. Shy for Bates, how you doing, brother? How you doing, mate? Very excited about this one, mate. Me too. We, we had a too. mad little chat upstairs. We, we could did. have filmed that, and that was the podcast video, really, wasn't it? I think we should have. I was, I was saying, sh shut the fuck up. Uh, yeah, because you kind of talked. I do a quick fire round to begin with. Okay. There's no stalling. Do I have to down my drink if I don't answer it? No, you've okay. just got to gotta be off okay. the mark. Right. Favourite movie? Uh, Good Will Hunting. Re why? Favourite band? Biffy Clyro. Pie and mash or Nobu? Pie and mash. Guinness or champagne? Guinness. The US office or the American? The UK office, you meant, yeah. The UK office. Chris Rock or Dave Chappelle? Oh, Dave Chappelle. Loving this. Eddie Murphy or Richard Pryor? Richard Pryor. Thank Come you. on. He's my comedy. Yeah. Everyone who's in the comedy world, Richard Pryor is, you have, you have to. I think Eddie Murphy would probably be insulted if I... If you said him. If I, if I said him. <laughs> said Everyone Richard I Pryor. spoke to, I, I was lucky enough to meet Chappelle a while back. Yeah. I was picking his bones. He was yeah. like, as soon as I mentioned Pryor, he was like, let's talk. Yeah. He was like, it's the Holy Grail. Yeah. He is the governor, weren't he? God, amazing. What's your, th what, what do you... I should have said Chris Rock, just because what he's been through. What's your thoughts on that? I was going to ask you that upstairs. <laughs> it's nice this is because, number one, this is the first time I've done a podcast with somebody that I don't really know. Yeah. And number two, when I, whenever I start doing these podcasts, I, I always say to me, mates, let's have a chat. Yeah. But you're the first person at 18 podcasts that went, well, what do you think? Yeah. But my opinion on it is, here's my opinion. I think it was the wrong time, wrong place. Right. Okay. I think the way Chris Rock handled it was unbelievable. Dignity yeah. stood there. I mean, that could have gone two ways. With yeah. my temperament, I'm jumping in the crowd. Yeah. He showed great discipline. I love the fact he held up. And I think it was a joke. And it yeah. wasn't... My, for example, my father unfortunately passed away 13 months ago. I walk into a bar three days later one of my friends is telling a joke about cancer. So I've walked in in the butt of the joke and everyone stopped. I went, oh, no, 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 no. Finish the joke. Yeah. Just because that particular subject has come into my life doesn't not make the joke funny. Like Ricky Chavez says. Targeting subject. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's an, I've joked about cancer. I've joked about everything. Just because my father passed away with it doesn't not make it that a no-go zone. Yeah. So as far yeah. as I'm concerned, I thought it was quite a tasteful joke. Yeah. And number two, she looks super cool with a skinhead. Yeah. Well, she looks awesome. Awesome. She looks, yeah. And I think, well, the proof is in the pudding. He yeah. walked out into Royal Albert Hall. We went to see him four weeks yeah. ago. Standing ovation. The thing is, you can't just... What do you think about the whole... Uh, I, I think at least take him aside afterwards and go, I didn't like that, mate. She's got alopecia. But I don't even think the joke was targeted at her alopecia. It's either. a movie. It was based it was around G.I. James. It was... It was a shit joke. It was a shit joke. That's what Ricky, I like the way Ricky turned around to face and went, he went, it weren't a, it weren't a very good joke, yeah. number one. Number two, it wasn't that hard. Yeah, and yeah. number three, he said, if it was me, I would have took the piss out of the new boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he, he, I mean, Ricky probably would have been um, intrinsically the best person who should have been there. He probably... <laughs> I What's your I'm, thoughts on Ricky? I love, how, I mean, how I love do you Ricky. think he gets it? Why do you think he gets it right? Brucey, you fuck yeah. He's, um, oh, yeah. I don't know. I think it's because he makes his jokes that there's a level of intelligence behind his jokes. Like jokes don't always have to be fucking funny. Okay, can I swear? Yes. Uh, they don't. They don't always have to be layered and complex. The same as jokes don't have to be overthought. Um, I think he gets away with it just because. I don't know. He, 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 you, you can tell the difference between, as, as Ricky says, there's target and subject. There's a difference between it. He's not targeting someone. He's joking about a subject. I not mean, the person, Joking yeah. about something that we're not supposed to joke about is how we get by in life. We can't just close off and go, can't joke about that. Um, if you can make a joke funny, great. Look, he said some things before and I'd be like, yeah. But that's the, that's the glory of comedy. 
Um, if I ever got into stand-up, not that Ricky would ever bloody watch me, but I could say things and you can go, well, just like you did with Chris. You could go, yeah. that was lame. Didn't, it wasn't a very good joke. It was insane, though. I mean, I, I've watched the Oscars. It's my thing. Ever since I was a child, yeah. it, I stay up till four yeah. in the morning. I probably watch, I suffer with sleep habits. I go, uh -huh. I watch probably three movies a night. Mm -hmm. So I get into bed, so if I'm not going out about 10, 11, I'll watch three on the bounce. Yeah. And I'm up early bird catches when I'm seven o'clock and then I'll have a nap during the day. But movies is my thing. Yeah. And I watch the Oscars every year and watching it. The thing that I've found most distasteful about it is there was 14 other people that were picking up award that night and that's overshadowed. Who were they? Can you name them? I can't I don't know name. Who they are, I remember the guy that came out afterwards. I think he does a, a, a super cool black guy with the glasses. What's his name? What's his name? Oh, he, did, uh, he works for Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy band. Fallon. He did that documentary. Super cool guy. Yeah. We leave all this bit in, by the way, all yeah. the shouting out. Oh, yeah. And my mate FaceTimed me on the last one. I went, leave it in. Love yeah. it. Questlove did this wicked, wicked documentary. He's walked yeah, out 30 really seconds later and it's like, just killed it. So that's my, my thing about it is as soon as you start jumping up on stage and slapping people and punching people, it's the end of comedy. I just think you're a bit of a rat if you get up and do that. Yeah. You just... see what happened to um, Chappelle afterwards? He got... The um, guy got... Yeah, but then the guy got turned into a pretzel, so... Yeah. Do you see the guy's arm? They snapped it completely backwards. Oh, he was... I don't know, he was, like, he was all like... <laughs> His arm was up here. I mean... You can't be doing it, mate. Was... And when, once it gets to a stage where there's comedy performances and there's security, it's like, hold on a second, it's not a rock yeah. and roll concert, it's comedy. Play stupid games, win silly prizes. So what was the first, so your, so that's uh, our last one, Twitter or Instagram? Um, uh, Twitter. Twitter. Do you know why? Because you can get every valuable source of information around the world from Twitter before it goes on the news. There was an earthquake in Cardiff when I lived there like five years ago. And straight away on Twitter in, I just had an earthquake in Cardiff. Cardiff. Yeah, it was a... Uh, uh, like four point and discount. Oh, it's a proper. So. It was a proper. Yeah, it was like I, I, I sat there. I was with my girlfriend at the time. And I was going, bloody monitors were shaking like that. I went, have you got? I was like, babe, have you got the washing machine on? Like really on a heavy cycle? She was like, no, no, it's an earthquake. And I was like, God, nonsense. Literally straight on Twitter, Cardiff earthquake, and you just see everyone. Cardiff earthquake. I, mean, I live in Cardiff. Twitter's a reliable source of information, unless we're talking about football transfers. And then Neymar and Mbappe and Ronaldo are coming to Newcastle as we speak. Uh, yeah. I hate the false. I mean, the reason why I'm not on Twitter, this might surprise you because people think that I'm thick skinned. I, I can't, I'm not really good at criticism. It's harsh. It's harsh. I know people like you, even though you probably get least than most people because your comedy is quite tasteful. But how do you deal with the, how do you deal with criticism then? I mean, do you just block I'm or just, move on or I'm, do you reply? Um, sometimes I treat it as though. I'm on stage and I'm getting heckled. So sometimes it's fun to fire back. And do you know what? What I've learned as well is a lot of these people who will, who will just fire hate at you, I, I've slid into a few DMs of theirs and been like, everything okay? And they've been like, do you know what, mate? No, actually, I'm not, I'm not doing well. And they've been like, they're just hating on you for... Just for a response. Gone, sort of in a turmoil and they want a response. And I've talked to them and been like, like what's going on? And uh, they've actually turned out, ended up being fans, but they just want to... Most of my thing is I get hated on, I think, because of how I look. Or dress. I mean, getting called Mick Hucknall isn't too <laughs> Mick Hucknall's the main one. Super cool, mate. Thank I'm all about feature. visual and image. I think you've got a, a very quirky, cool... Thank you very I much. I just think uh, if it's not broken, don't fix it. You're always going to get haters. Yeah. I, Instagram, I just... Instagram, I think, is a cesspit of just... Everyone who's on that, on that app, everyone who's taking photos and, and making is their it, content... It's a false. It's, a it's, false. it's all... It's not... Not real. It's not real. It's not real. I mean, you know, the hypocrisy is I upload on there. But yeah. I just think there's a lot of people who, who act a certain way on Instagram uh, to create this, yeah, this like false image of themselves. So it is, I mean, it's the platform that I was on Twitter. But like I said, I just, I, I just feel you get less criticism on Instagram. Yeah, it's an open forum. It's an open forum. What with Twitter, it's about having a good, I think if you have a good vocabulary, mm. I'm, I'm not the best reader and writer. So I think if you're smart and intelligent, I think it's, it's 
because you can <laughs> just bury yeah. people. Well, my tweet today was, anyone know why my passport's taken so long? So I go, go on there for advice as well. Why? But no, it's, mate, most of the people who hate you on Twitter are in, uh, no offense to any West Ham fans, they're in a West Ham shirt, uh, they're about 55, 60 years of age with high blood pressure and they're holding a carp. Yeah. They're always holding a carp fish and they're like, oh, you, fuck, you yeah, fucking yeah. cunt, mate. Yeah. If I have a an air carp. I'll smash your head in, you fucking. And I'm like, yeah. dude, your hairline gets in 15 minutes after you when you get home. So just, you know, some just, of them are just there with a carp fish and giving you abuse. And you just have to look at it and go, dickhead. <laughs> but so it, you don't, yeah. you don't. And what's your most, and what platform do you feel you get the best um, res, uh, resources from or work from or, or op, uh, you know, like uh, the opportunities from? Um, nowadays, it's probably TikTok. But once again, mate, when I, once, I, once I upload things onto social media, I don't, it's out, I don't care. It's out there. It's lovely when people go, oh, I've seen your video recently. And I go, oh, I did well, did it? I don't, I try not to check the numbers because it's for anyone to learn. You shouldn't define, it. we talk about on the roof. You shouldn't yeah. define yourself by metrics. You just shouldn't. Because, you know, one video could bomb one day and then the next uh, video could go viral. It's just, you just don't define yourself by metrics. You don't define your talent or who you are as a person by metrics. So I try to just upload things and then ignore it. I'll reply to one or two people and then that's it. It's out there and I get away. Well, I only went on to um, TikTok because mm -hmm. I'm 50. I think yeah. when you see 50 and 55-year-old man, I'm not speaking to for all. I it still a bit can't sad. believe, sorry to interrupt you, yeah. my mother would kill me for that. I still can't believe when you told me you're only 50. I can't believe that. Yeah, I look older, do I? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I mean, when I shave, I had a massive beard up yeah. until a few weeks ago, and... I I'm, thought you were like, I don't know, late 30s, early oh, 40s. That's what I actually genuinely did. Mate, I'm, I've worked a hard day around. I'm but. treating you. Like, I'm the dinner, drinks, a uh, bit of Tom Ford, I think a little bottle of Tom Ford on the right. A little, oh. little bit of McQueen, maybe a oh, little McQueen, a little mate. shirt, anything else? A little you. meal for two at uh, Cipriani's. Um, um, Zoe Kravitz, can you arrange that? Is that something? Good friend she is. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's all I, I've ever wanted. The thing, that, the thing, the thing that, that hooked me on you, I have watched hundreds of hours, I think. Mm -hmm. The only reason I joined TikTok was because of you. Yeah. Where I was going with TikTok. I think it's a young man's game. Okay. And I think TikTok and what's it called? The other Snap, Snapchat. Snapchat, yeah. That's a young culture. You're third. I think it works for you. You've got that. You're, you're still a young man. It's cool. I think when I see 50, 55, 60 year old men, when I see Rod Stewart, who used to be an icon, doing a dance on TikTok, I'm like, you're an institution, mate. Stop it. <laughs> I haven't it. seen that. That sounds like great content. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd probably go, you know what, AD? If he's enjoying it and yeah. if he's buzzing off of yeah. it, but. The only reason I went on there was to follow your stuff. Oh, appreciate The last that, eight weeks, mate, I've been stalking your material. I just- You'll get fed up, mate, trust me. No. I get fed up of it, I'm like, oh. No, so. by far, I mean, all the characters, I watched that great sequence with you and your friend, the Irish guy. Al Foran, shout out Al Foran. What's his name again? Al Foran. Al Foran. He's a genius, and in my, in my opinion, and he hates it when I do this, because he's like, oh, Schaefer, come on, you're very good. Um, the best to do it, in my opinion. Really? I just think he's, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I can't, yeah, every time I think of Al, I'm like, I stutter because I think he's amazing. How long did that sequence, how long did that sequence take to, to write and to, he, there must have been a bit of prep with that, no, surely. No, literally just get the phone out, he's like, Schaefer, come here, we're going to, we're going to do this. Phone out, boom, straight back and forth, done. So there was no, yeah. Nothing. He just, he just six I minutes, you know that. really well. I just think he's, I think he's the best to do it. I think he's severely, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm literally licking his ass here, but he's, he's severely underrated, uh, overlooked. Um, I think he's amazing. I love him to bits. I know, but he's do getting you married in July as well. But, but do you think that with people like him, what always tends to happen, you just said the word overlooked, overshadowed by other people that in your yeah. opinion, are, aren't quite on that level, but for some reason, certain people are just whatever, it may, let, let it be visually. Mm -hmm. You have to have the talent full stop, in my yeah. opinion, but some people are just maybe visually or got the, the, the personality behind the characters. But do you, with people like that, they always get their turn. Yeah. And they always a, come, yeah. they always have their day in the sunshine and they always go on to great things. It's just people always, it's like comedians. I watched, uh, there was a comedian who passed away recently. There's a Netflix special about him. His name was, um, Jim Carrey came out of retirement to do a Netflix about him. Oh, um, uh, uh, Bear, uh, who? Andy Who? 
No. Uh, uh, ben Sager. Something Sager. Ben Sager. Uh, Bob, Bob Sager. Bob Sager. He was like okay, a comedian, yeah. Yeah, presenter. Yeah. I watched the Netflix special last night. Jim Carrey, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, you name it. Yeah. We're talking about this guy. And I wasn't up to date with him. And sometimes in life, it's always, it's like the musicians, you, you know, you'll speak to a musician and go, oh, I see the dude over there, mate. He's, he's unbelievable. I'm like, well, you've sold 80 million albums. Mate. It's like, yeah, but mate, he's a musician's musician. It's like artists, they always yeah. go, he's the artist, artist. Yeah, it's like yeah. in my job, I was very lucky to be in a position where I worked with a certain person and I had a break. But I know hairdressers in my field where I go, oh, he would wipe the floor with me. Yeah. But he's earning 300 quid a week. Yeah. Because he had, like the boss, it's like walking down the high street. I'll, especially around here, I'll go, oh my God, mate, you're so fucking talented. Yeah. But I think with life, it's about luck. Yeah. I think with life, a lot of people run with an opportunity. I was given an opportunity and I ran with it. Uh huh. And some people maximize opportunity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I think it's, a, it's where all this was gone about your mate you were talking about. I think that they always come to the forefront eventually. Yeah, I hope so. Because he's super, super. I watched that six minute. My Irish friend, where we're going to go after, sent me the six minute clip. And he yeah. went, check these two out together. I was like, he's Joe it's, Pesky, it's, mate. It's Conor McGregor is just... It's on point. It is it, very good, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very good. And I learned, so he learned Gordon Ramsay from me and I earned... Does he do Ramsay now? Uh, he, yeah, so he did, he learned Gordon Ramsay from me and I learned Conor McGregor from him. My Conor McGregor used to be trash. and I, it's, it's about average now, but he's... Um, You're yeah. Tyson Fury's dad. John Fury! Get that Guinness down you now! Lord Jesus, Mary, what's his, Mary Jesus, what's he say? I don't know, he just, he's a madman, I love Bless him. Bless Father Lord Jesus. Bless Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Yeah. If there's any man sits round this table now, there's a beautiful apartment here you've got here. But I don't like that up there, no vaccine passports. There should be no passports anyway, dosses. <laughs> dosses! It's just, he's, he's, I think he's, he's great. Mate, he's, I think he will have his own show, please tell me. I hope so. Because they I had the Furies. I don't think old John Fury really wants it. No. They'd be negotiating his contract and he'd be trying to fight them. Yeah, yeah. They'll I mean, pay you 5k an episode. So good enough for me, you can't buy my, you yeah. can't buy my talent, I'll fight you now. I'll fight any man. I'll fight Channel 4, the BBC, <laughs> I'll fight you in the yard. That's him, we'll settle if I get a show or not. That's what he's like. I love him though, I think he's, uh, I think he's such a... He's just an old You've mastered traveler. that though out. What are the ones that you picked? I mean, obviously Gordon now is yeah. without a doubt to a team. It's the mannerisms, yeah. the big boy, the just all, the intensity. Yes, that, right. okay. the arm. Come on. I mean, it's the whole yeah. intensity. It's yeah. the, it, how long did it take you to master that? Um, is it a progression? Is sometimes it? I can just, I can just sit there and go, I'll sit there with a beer watching TV and I'll go, I'll repeat a few words. Really? We, like Matthew McConaughey, when I first did Matthew McConaughey, anyone who does Matthew McConaughey is always, all right, all right, all right, is always oh, yes. those three words. And he does a whistle. Is that the tongue? Is that the... Yeah. He does like a whistle when he talks. Yeah. And then, yeah, I just kept watching him and watching him. If I really sat and studied most of them, yeah, I could probably do a lot more, but Gordon Ramsay um, took years. Because if I look at my Gordon Ramsay from back in 2010, you, I sound like an exasperated since, cow. I'm so like, you've been doing it for 12 years then? That. Probably, yeah. But it was like, it was one I dropped and then I came back to it. My Gordon Ramsay in 2010 was terrible. It, it was like this, welcome to my amazing kitchen. It just didn't sound like him. Right. And I watched impressions of it back. I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I put that to bed and then tried it again. But, um, so it is practice makes perfect. Yeah. And then I, I spent a little bit of time with him, with the BBC. And then I was like, you pick and up the nuances. Well, doesn't he? He's, um, He's very, oh, he's, just, oh. he's just so inquisitive. Just wants to, has things, has what? Oh okay. yeah, don't. He's just, he's just straight away and he's, he always does this thing where he like, he's, he's like always, always, uh, I'm stood up now, but he'll be like, he'll be talking and he'll be like, oh, that's how it. you do, has what? Yeah, don't And then he, like, he touches in, he's always like this. So I was like, I got ADHD and he's like, good, you yeah. look uh, amazing. <laughs> and, um, and he'll be like touching. <laughs> He'd be like touching and he's like, he does this thing where he like looks away. He's interested in what you're saying, but it's like, yeah. he's so, um, he's so high functioning. I think he's, I think he's an amazing bloke. I think, um, he's an incredible father as well. Like he loves those kids. You can yeah. you just, he loves them unconditionally, obviously. He's a and father. it's another man who's taken 
I'm good mates with Marco, and yeah. obviously they've had a history together. Yeah. And he's obviously taken an opportunity, mate, and become the most successful, famous yeah. Yeah. chef on the planet. Yeah. And not just chef, probably personalities uh -huh. as well. So, yeah. uh-huh, you just, you uh -huh. did? Uh-huh, uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Um, you're don't, absolutely right. Don't, we, don't, don't, what you're saying. <laughs> come but on, say come I'm on. Looking in the back of this fucking amazing room. <laughs> and it's, it's full of Liverpool shirts. <laughs> come, come on, on big boy. Come on, big Where's boy. the Celtic shirts? <laughs> you fucking donkey. Yes! I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Do you go out? Uh, that thing that you must hate is do you go out and you're not a performing seal, but do you go out? You must hate when people go, I'll do it. When people are lovely, but most of the time it's like people no. are quite like. It's like people come up to me, people say are, a joke. It's like, yeah, yeah, well, it's like, well, it's like going up to a plumber and saying, Can you fix my sink right now for me? Like, it's, um, I don't really. Obviously, in the context of this, it's, it's You just did that great. and I didn't yeah, ask, yeah. and it no, comes across perfect. better. Yeah. Uh, very just natural, but outside of you know, d d d again, I, I've said to you earlier on when we we're talking upstairs, like Im impressions isn't. It's not like it's not my main thing. Well, that, like, was, the, that little, was the yeah. that was the that was the next the next yeah. thing. So acting, writing, and impressions. Yeah. What order? Um, that's a good question. Is it a good question? Yeah. Can I give really me marks out of 10 for that question? Well, uh, I'll give that a 10 out of 10. Do it in Gordon. Give it a amazing 10 out of 10. Look, I asked. you've already asked. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> it's, um, sorry, sorry. It's, um, so, uh, uh, acting and writing. Acting and writing. I've fallen in love. But writing applies to me for music as well, though. Yeah. Because I love... <laughs> no, I, I, no, that's a lie. We'll take that back. I went very Liam Payne then. Yeah. Um, I, I, my my oh, musical you. talent is... Um, he did a bit I of love a music. Liam, he did a bit of a Ricky lately. I can write lyrics, but campfire chords. So won't. writing, the reason why I would have put writing as well, you look like a control freak to me. Yeah. Uh, I am. Yeah. I like design. When I do product ranges, I have a team involved. I always take yeah. over. When I'm doing shoots, I do the styling, the makeup, the da 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 even though I've got a yeah. team. Selecting the pictures, the photographers are like, are you really serious? Yeah. The reason why I thought writing is because everything starts like singing and mm -hmm. uh, acting starts with the material. Mm -hmm. They always say, actors always say, it's no good without a great script. So I, I always assumed that the writing for you would be one because everything works from that yeah. then the acting because in order to do a good impression i think you have to be, have great acting yeah skills. you do yeah it's um it's all nuance you've got to like, it's all good just doing the voice but you've got to be able to have the body language as well yeah uh, again bringing it back to alfor and what he's very good at doing is when he does the impression he be cut he looks like the character is he based is he based here? no no see i think if he was based in london he'd be is he in ireland he's uh, over in dublin um Get out of the garden, he, he, He's over in Dublin. He's having a very good time there. Oh, that's he's doing very well. Oh, genius. Um, he's, um, yeah, I think... If he was uh, based here, him, do you think the opportunity... Oh, 100%. We'd, be, we'd have our own show, I think. Why has he not got a show in Ireland? I mean, it's still... I mean, I know it's not a huge audience, but it's still yeah. RT1, RT2. It's he still... Start, he's been on RT and stuff like that. He's just... I don't know. All it, this, is, this entire podcast has turned into the plate of arsenic for Al Ford and <laughs> me just going... It's mad though, because I like it, I man. said, I have no format. Normally I have a list of A to Z, da, 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 but I've just, I'm just kind yeah. of winging it with you yeah. because there's no, I suppose the different, you know, you, you know when I watch chat shows, they've always got like a four or five minute yeah. window. You have to yeah. ask the key things, what they're promoting. They always have to bring out the book and stuff. For me, I'm like, I just love, love having chit chat. Yeah, and exactly, but I, man. But I'm, oh, I'm really interested in the process. So say, how long does it take for you to put together? Say you come up, you're at home, you're watching telly, you watch something, you think, yeah. How long does it take you to, to, to put together a script, set it up, film it, and make it? Yeah, so the first thing is. Do you have a big team, how, by the way? Do you have a team behind you? Do I have a Cameraman, Yeah, 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 I do, yeah. Well, wicked. I, I, for me, the first thing is um, how valuable is the impression? So I want to do, I, I try not to do something that's too niche. Right. <clears throat> so, for example, for years, I did Game of Thrones impressions. It's the most watched show in history. Just jumped on that because everyone loved it. I'll jump on like Peaky Blinders, 
Love the I don't maybe Obi Wan Kenobi, the new uh, series. I try and that's the first thing. How valuable is this? The I audience want, has to be wide for yeah, in order for the. Wanna, yeah. yeah, I don't want to jump on something that's just like at, at the moment. Everyone's like, "Oh, jump on Love Island." I'm like, ah, it's just not me. It's no. not. No, I don't want to. And it, plus, I re- I think the reason why that's not a good angle is because number one, they're children on a beach. Yeah. Number two, there's been so much. Yeah. heartbreak with yeah. that show exactly I, yeah. I mean I know two of the people that will run it extremely yeah. well that have gone there I just think that doing comedy I think there's so much more of a spectrum of people rather than when I see comedians picking on those characters I think they're children mate yeah. they're 18 they're making yeah. they're going to be millionaires in 12 weeks yeah. they'll have 2 million followers fact all yeah. of them well 70% of them but in 18 months time yeah I, when I meet them, which I do a lot of them, my yeah. very good friend of mine and used to be my agent, Dave, he manages quite a lot of them. Mm-hmm. I, I, when I meet them, I always say, save every penny, yeah. milk it, yeah. bank it, and in 18 months, you won't be do pulled into do. nightclubs, yeah. you'll be turned away. Yeah. Have the money backed up and put it into something good. Yeah. But I'm all for it. Whenever I see people on reality TV, a lot of actors get very upset about it, thinking, oh, mate, I've been to acting school my whole life, these people are taking... I'm like, listen, if if they get an opportunity, you, you've got to let them run with it. They're kids. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's. I just think that there's easier things in comedy to do, and it's, I don't think it's your niche anyway. I've done years ago. I used to do David Attenborough narrates oh, Love genius. Island, but it was never like. Um, oh, that's that's, yeah, that's different. Were, you're not you're not yeah. picking on the characters. Though, <laughs> I you? don't do it anymore because of um, what happened with a few yes. people on the show. Yeah. I mean, none of my jokes were. Um, and yours are more impressions. It's not deep. Yeah, it was. Aggressive. It was always focused around the impression. It wasn't yeah. hard hitting on the person or yes. anything like that. But I just got to a point where I was like, I don't want to do this. I'm a massive advocate for mental health. Yeah, good. and even though what I'm doing might not be, you know, twisting the knife, I don't know how they're going to see it. But usually, my impressions are an ode to the person. Yes, unless it's Donald Trump, because you yeah. know what? I don't. I have got it. Oh, I yeah. don't really like Donald. Um, you don't like Donald? No, no, not really. <laughs> Fine for anyone who does like Donald, um, but it, it, yeah, most of the time my impressions <coughs> so are an ode or a tip of the hat to the person. So the the, the yeah. characters are the ones yeah. you do. Are, are like, I I respect you. Yeah, yeah. Bang. Exactly. Yeah. And where do you see? Do you see yourself getting your own sketch show? Is it something? Interestingly, um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, said, <coughs> I said to you earlier, I know I can't say too much, but. Um, it was written on there, in case you thought I added it, it was... Yeah. <coughs> we're doing so you that. have some, <laughs> potentially something <coughs> that you're yeah, going to be we're, doing. Um, we're working on a show at the moment. I can't even say the publishers yeah. are, you know, though. Um, and uh, it's going to be an uh, incredible deep fake show. And um, we got the news, yeah, like yesterday that I'm in that. And I'm playing someone, I can't say who. I hopefully involved deep in with the writing with that. And I'm really excited. It's... Um, that's cool, yeah, mate, isn't I'm it? I'm really excited for it. I, I, I don't know where it's going to leave me. I mean, <clears throat> for me, I've never really wanted my own sketch show. I don't ever want to be the star of the show. I'd love to be on Saturday Night Live, though. Yeah? I'd love to be on Saturday Night Live. That's my... Would you like to be on it or writing on for it? it? And writing. Or just on it. That's great. But I'd love... Saturday Night Live is... Yeah, I like obsess over is it. The... I love New York. I love. I just love the history. Well, that was of one it. of the. I didn't add it in. Quick fire one. I had uh, New York or uh, London. New York. I love yeah. New York. I've been there maybe eleven or twelve times, and <clears throat> oh, I hate it. Every time I leave it, it's like you're leaving someone. It's like you're leaving someone that you love. That you love. Yeah. Yeah. I love it there. I love the people. Everyone's like, oh, London's better. I I think New York's far superior. We always are attracted. I love LA for one reason. I spend a lot of time there is because of the weather. Yeah. New York for me is a little bit like London. So yeah. the reason why I love LA is the is the the lifestyle, but for coolness and for nightlife and for opportunity, New York yeah. is Everyone's just so lovely there. Yeah. But Everyone, people from New York always want to live in London. Yeah. And, and then, people yeah. in London, we That's go true. there and it's like, I mean, where I live, I probably live in the most central part of town. Yeah. And people always say to me, amazing, but, but do you want to live in? I went, no, nah, I want to be in the heart of it. Yeah. That's true. That's one of my things. It's like, if I'm going to live in a city, I want to be in the city. In the city, not yeah. on the outskirts. I love. So yeah. can you see that? Is that the, would that be the, I, just did a bit I, of I think I, I'd live and die in New York. Really? Yeah, I'd live and die in there, in whatever capacity that is. I could go over there at 30 years of age and do too much to drink and just pass away and die. But um, I'd love to, I just, there's so much history there. 
I love London, I do, but New York is just, it's, it's just, I'm in love with it, absolutely love it. Every time I leave it, I get like butterflies in my stomach, I'm like, oh, I've got to go back. And, and I've always been obsessed to get back out there, always. So you're half Irish, no, no, sorry, Welsh, English. In Welsh and English, and there's a little bit of Irish bloodline, because my grandfather was a traveller. <laughs> really? Yeah, so I used to go to like Appleby Horse Fair and stuff as a kid. Oh, did you watch it on Instagram the other day with all the police cordons up? Yeah. It's once I watched the documentary about it. Yeah. So is it once a year for three days they take over the town? I mean, I was, yeah, yeah, you, you put the horses in the river. I mean, I was, this was between the ages of seven Do you think that's a nod to that? Do you think that's a nod, the whole... I do like gypsy fat, like old yeah. school gypsy... Like a Culture is cool, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Like, uh, my grandfather used to speak Romany gypsy as well, but I... It, it taught me a lot of values, like how to look after yourself. You had no choice. Your grandfather would be on his knees going like, you know, put your, put your fucking hands, hands up, up and he'd just be like showing you how to you know, Dad, I want to be an actor, I want to be a thespian. Yeah. Oh yeah, if he was alive now, he wouldn't have that. Yeah. He wouldn't have that. Um, Cut the air. But, uh, but uh, we, <laughs> we grew up, I, I remember, um, I'll never forget, it's a story I've never told on a podcast. Um, we were in the caravan, I must have been about seven or eight years ago. <laughs> I love it. We were in the caravan here. Chef, would you go up there? No. Um, we were going, so there's like a, it's like a, almost like a, a highway that runs through Appleby where they show off their horses yeah. on the carts. And my uncle, uh, God rest his soul, was, um, he, he was a, he was one of the tallest jockeys on the planet at the time, he was six foot five, <laughs> which is mad. And, um, but he used to race, race carts and he was trotting up and down like that. And on my way over, I, I to point this information, I, I tre went into someone's awning and tread on a dog bowl. Um, cause there was a kid that I knew and I was playing with him and whatever. And I uh, spilt it all over. And this woman, this Irish traveling woman, give me a back under. <laughs> like I went and she was like, you're fucking stupid idiot. Yeah. <laughs> you little din law child here. Yeah. And um, so my grandfather, I told, I come in sobbing to my grandfather. My grandfather then fought, had a fight with, like he went out, I'll, I'll meet you now. We'll have a, we'll have a, we'll have a square up. I had a fight with her husband. Beat the shit out of him. My granddad was, he's like five foot five, but an absolute. Just, Old school, he'll just proper kill fish. You, yeah. um, and then, uh, my grandfather made me fight the son at seven years of age. So you're like, I would have preferred just the backhand. And I'm talking like, and, and, just I'm let it, that, just leave yeah. it at that. I told, I told, <laughs> I've never told that story. I told my manager it once. He was like. You poor boy. But that, well, I come from proper Irish yeah. background, same thing, come on from school. I always remember the kid as well, Man Kai Hai, little uh, Chinese guy when I was probably eight, went yeah. to uh, Catholic school, come on grind, crying. My dad beat me first oh, yeah, that's, for yeah. coming home crying yeah. and then sent me back yeah. and said, yeah. do what you need to do. Expelled, come on, proud of me. Yeah, that's the same with me. He said, if you, if you go out and you come back crying, he goes, I'll, I'll yeah. give you something to cry about. Don't ever him. come back to my house crying. Yeah. This stage, mom, never have anyone coming back to, to this yeah. house asking for me, like catalog yeah. money. Never have anyone yeah. banging on my door. When I came home crying, severe beating, can't do it anymore. Yeah. And the next day, the encouragement to go in and finish yeah. off what I didn't do. I'm like, but I don't want it. I'll, I'll, I'll honestly, hand on heart, I'll never bring my kids up like that. No, my I mean. My kids are free to do what they want. And have you got children? Get, no, I don't. I probably have in the world somewhere. Um, oh, it's, come on. Um, <laughs> probably somewhere. Um, it's just, it's, <laughs> I'm thinking about it now. I'm going, <laughs> New York. look a little bit like, yeah, New, New York. York. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I should call her actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, my, I, I wouldn't bring my kids up like that. But there's one thing I will say is it did. Good breeding. Like though. I don't, like, I don't, I don't miss my grandfather at all. I don't. Uh, but it <laughs> taught me basic morals. I, my grandmother used to say, see how you find so, and that's a big thing in London where people are like, oh, I've heard that he's a dick. Don't go and hang out with him. I've heard he's a dick. I'll go find out for myself. I always Before, do the judging. I don't care how close my friends are to me and how much I trust them. I'll go and find out myself. I, I see how you find this. was something my grandmother yeah, yeah. and my grandfather always used to say. Um, and it just taught me, I guess, to look after myself. Like, it sort of instilled in I think it in stands you, you in good stead. Yeah, I mean, it's instilled even to this day. It's probably childhood trauma, if anything. It, it, it instilled in, <laughs> into me to this day. Childhood that, trauma. Probably. It's probably instilled into me to this day that I just don't... Even to this day, I'm not... I'm just not... Nothing scares me. Yeah. Because, uh, well, number one, nothing scares me as much as my own bloody head. And uh, number two, in the back of my mind, even now, it's like, 
I'm probably scared that I'm going to have hammering off my granddad still. So it is probably some level of trauma, but... They say it follows you in a generation, but I'm, the, I'm like you. Yeah. I've never raised my voice yeah. to my son. Yeah. He is pleased, may I, may I go to bed, may I have an apple. I've yeah. got him taught like that, but as far as disciplined people, I'm mm. like, oh, no. I'm, yeah, I'll never lay hands on my children. And never... Um, I just don't... You'll probably have loads. I can see you in about 15 years. You will, think, you no. will crack it. You will be super successful. That's oh, fact. You, man. And you will have a ton of cash and you will have kids in every continent. Fact. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I, yeah, one day. I do, I, look, I do want kids. I'd like to adopt as well. But for me, I'm, like, I'm totally committed to my career and, and, and I'm not 30. ready. I'm not ready. And I think everyone, people should normalise in your 30s. It's yeah. just extended adolescence. You don't need to, everyone's like, got to get married at 25, where's the mortgage, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, look, chill. I've still, I've still got to work myself out. And I don't think you should date or nah. date anyone. Unless I, was you're 40, happy I was 44 when I had my first. Yeah. So I'm like, I got my 30s, early 40s. Then I thought to myself, there's, I don't want to rekindle my youth. There's nothing worse than an old man in a nightclub. And I yeah. always swore, I used to say to my mates back in the day in China Waits on a Wednesday, I go, look at the old dude in the corner, what's he doing? Oh, no. And now I'm at that age where I'm like, yeah. it will never happen to yeah. me because even the way I dress, I'm starting to get a bit conscious and thinking, am I a bit too old to wear no, t-shirts or jeans? Nonsense. But do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm conscious of not being that stereotypical man trying to rekindle his youth. Yeah, you're a rock and roller, Jack and Cola, you are. Oh, you're tea and funny. toast, fancy your roast bangers and mash loads of cash. <laughs> Going back to telly, do you think TV is dead? In the UK, yes. The, the reason UK. I say that is because I've been doing lots of different podcasts with lots of different people like yourself, extremely successful on social media, YouTube. I mean, I wrote down some figures the amount of subscribers and the amount of views you've had and it's like tens and tens of millions of hits yeah. throughout the years it's like an average tv show for example i did a tv show back in 2003 2004 it was on for a year every day it was yeah. called the salon and we were getting like five million people at six o'clock in the day which now is like unheard that of is, yeah that's insane but, but back in the day that show kind of you could live off the back of a show yeah. like that, which I did for, yeah. for quite a few years, taking away my professional side. Because I always swore when I got into TV, I need to back it up. Yeah. And I'll, I'm doing a good, I always do that anyway. So don't okay. think. Okay, uh, uh, wow. wow, here we go. So, um, I, but I always do do that, so don't. Come on. <laughs> I was going to Get on with it. <laughs> Aiden, fuck me. Come on. What's he doing, that jerk? <laughs> so, so um, when I started doing talent, I always swore to myself, always be able to back up what you do for a yeah. living and whatever tv show i was offered i've probably done seven kind of different prime time shows mm -hmm. they've always been to do with my craft okay so i swore to myself i'll never <coughs> do a show me. like a strictly or dancing a nice because i'm not a dancer and i'm not a, a an ice skater so I'll, i've always stuck to funny enough you mentioned matthew mcconaughey yeah. i did a show with his wife yeah camilla oh, albert camilla Alves. amazing she in america so She's a very, very beautiful woman. NBC, she was, it was an amazing thing, but it was to do with hair. Do you think that, the reason I got onto that whole thing is now, TV shows are getting 300,000, 200,000, mate. And this is probably gonna, I can, my manager's probably in my ear right now. Don't say it, don't say it, but I- No, I know, you have to pick up because you're gonna do mainstream gonna telly. It, I'm gonna say it anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna say um, it anyway. My, oh, come my on. biggest problem at the moment, and um, <laughs> this will probably never get me a show ever again, uh, I think commissioners. Oh, no, uh, I think commissioners in 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 British TV in, in particular, uh, fucking dinosaurs. They don't. I totally. They're agree still with you. relying on their demographic of you know Betty who's worked a fifty hour oh uh, so a fifty hour said. shift and she's come home and they, they're not. Everyone's too scared in this country to take a chance on something. Yes. There's a lot of red tape with everything. Um, there needs to be more young commissioners. The and the comedy commissioners are young, I will say that. There's a lot of comedy commissioners that I've worked with who are geniuses, are like really good at what they're doing, they know what they're talking about. But it's just the final person who owns the channel who's like... Well, and which is... No, of I'm not having that. And I'm like, so you just see the same like, no offense to any of the comedians who are on these panel shows, because some of them are, you know, are, are, are brilliant, but it's the same, same panel shows 
with the same, same people. I come across as bitter. Yeah. I was trying to launch this thing that I've done. I, I, I come up with the idea for Salon Nightmares yeah. many, many years ago. Okay. Okay, let's okay. go. And based on... You've given him a fade. <laughs> You've given him a fucking tram line. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Jesus Christ, I said taper it, not fucking shaving. Christ. Will Smith's about to get on stage and slap me. So I was saying to, I went in to Channel 4, I had done another, Channel 4 launched my career, so I have to be careful, but the difference in my world, when you go into Boots to launch a new brand, they'll have a 22-year-old girl fresh out of uni that's on point, will know about TikTok, will know what's current, what's cool, uh -huh. what's fresh. TV commissioners, you're right. I've just had a lengthy process of sending this thing that I've made to ITV, BBC, blah, blah, all the channels, Sky, Love AD, comes across great, powerful story, but needs an extra celebrity twist. I'm like, oh. does this have to be based around celebrity? I'm not a celebrity, I'm a hairdresser, number one. Yeah. I do celebrity hair, but I am a hairdresser. This has got nothing to do, and so anyway, a long story short, I've <coughs> ended up paying for it and doing it myself, and we're getting it away with another channel. Good stuff. So what you've just said, you're not criticising and condemning the whole of TV world, but I think it's a very dated format. You walk in and it's someone that's been there for 25 years plus. Yeah. Who's kind of going, we love whatever, Gokwan or whatever it is, whatever the person may be. It's like, it's, 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 a, it's a safe bet, it's yeah. proven. Channel 4, for example, was launched many, many years ago to be different. Yeah. It was the first breakout exactly, channel, yeah. that's why I love it. Yeah. But I think the BBC's the idea, when I watch the panel shows, I'm like, it's the same dudes, mate. Yeah. And it's, it's, you need the fresh blood, mate. Do you think America allow fresh blood in? Yeah, they do, yeah, they do. America, I mean, America have a lot more freedom, it's just like the Wild West there, but um, they do. They, a lot of talent comes from, you look at Saturday Night Live. It's not about uh, who do you know and what do you do. It's, I think we can make this talent grow on our format. I don't feel like that's a thing over here. I think it's a lot of who you're rubbing shoulders with in Soho on a night out and someone being like, oh, yeah, we've got a new format coming up. We'll get you involved. We'll get you involved. We'll sort you out. Yeah, thank you so much. You look at, um, there's a Saturday Night Live being written over here at the moment. Oh. I think it's with Sky, but don't quote me on it. And I guarantee Saturday Night Live was always about impressionist comedians. Always has been. You're perfect. They're right, I, I guarantee I won't be on there. Now, I know that sounds like I have a chip on my shoulder. I, in Why some do you regard, think? I do. Because but you kind of tick James the Corden, boxes, though. You're still young. Yeah. You're relevant. You're, you're successful on Facebook, Instagram, all the platforms. So wouldn't you think that someone will go, got a great look, it's very funny, great acting skills, the guy can write material. It's yeah. Not, it's not your perfect marriage. They just don't. It's weird. I can't see me getting on that. I actually can't. I can see that not happening. And I'm just like, but then the irony is I could go out to America and go out and sat in my life in America. I wish, I wish. Is that, so that is the That's end. That's the goal. Is that the uh, Holy Grail? A, a Disney Pixar, to play a character in a Disney Pixar movie and Saturday Night Live, absolutely. And everyone that comes, goes on Saturday Night Live. Who's the, um, the, the late uh, Silverman? Oh, Sarah Silverman, yeah. She's one of my favourite. Pete Davidson as well. Pete Davidson. He's good. Oh, you yeah, know, he's kind of, Do you wow. think Pete Davidson's... I want this to come across the right way, because I actually think he's... I, I love watching the roast, so I had a mad yeah. chat with uh, Jeff Ross. OK. Who's never had, I think, his proper yeah. day yeah. in the sun. I, I agree with that. He, he's with, ev you name it, every comedian that turns up here, Chappelle, Rock, he's, he's comes that. out yeah. first. Yeah. Whenever I've been to the big show as America, it's always Jeff Ross. All the roasts that, that you've seen, Jeff yeah. Ross. He will have his day in the sun. But do you think that um, Pete Davidson, which it shouldn't be, but I'm glad it is, he's getting all the notoriety now because of who he's dating? Yeah, to some degree. But yeah. Pete's always been quite a niche. He doesn't look like he should be on, you know, he's just kind of, oh, hey, tattooed and, oh, so. I think he's oh. brilliant. He's really just like, oh, and all, just awkward. And I love him. I think he's great. I actually do think he's great. I don't find all of his comedy funny, but again, that's comedy. Yeah. You're not supposed to think every joke hits the mark. Um, but I love him. I also think, apparently, I don't know, apparently he's a bit of a boozer. So he'd like turn up to write in sessions for Saturday Night Live super late. 
And I was just like, eh, he's all right. Yes. You can <laughs> imagine him being a complete fucking nut, I can't yeah, hear. Yeah. He's cool as fuck, though. I love him. I think he's awesome. I watch a lot of his old material and I'm like, oh no, this kid is. He jokes, a lot. He jokes a lot about his father dying yeah, in 9 11. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, who's the English comedian that's doing a lot with him now in about Carr? Jimmy Carr, yeah, they did a roast. Isn't it mad that Jimmy Carr. I Carr's... thought this would be the roast of. Yeah, Pete Davidson's father. I thought this would be the roast of Pete Davidson, but I realised that was his father 15 years ago. <laughs> and someone he's like that. laughing at Pete that. Davidson's like. Well, that's what I mean. You have to laugh. Do you think... Only he can laugh as well. well. Yeah, only wrapping up. Do you think... Do you think it's becoming harder to do comedy? Um, I said to you, I think the pendulum's swinging back the other way. Because you've got to remember, this whole cancel culture of trying to end, waking up one morning and trying to end someone's career because you don't agree with something they've said. And I'm not talking about, this is what I say, common sense lacks nowadays. We're not talking about racism, homophobia, anything like that. Yeah. It, it, let's have some common sense. People will make a joke about a fictional story that doesn't exist and someone will wake up and go, I'm cancelling you. And it's recreational outrage. That's all it is. You're waking up and going, I don't like you, I'm, I'm deplatforming you. Um, as Ricky Gervais puts it quite eloquently is like cancelling something cancelling people for something they said 10 years ago is only further ensuring that you'll get cancelled for the same thing 20 years ago 20 years right, later that's what we were discussing um, earlier yeah and i just like I, I think a lot of it is i think you should just ignore it and i'm not again common sense oh what you know what i do about... when i watch comedy if i don't like it, i just switch off yeah if i'm on social media which i'm not a lot if i come across something i don't like i just don't watch it but, yeah it, it's, but we're not it's... talking about you know Common sense again. If someone said something that's blatantly like homophobic and like ridiculous, like you got you're absolutely right, call it out. But yeah, we're talking. There's just such a distinct lack of com a lack of common sense nowadays, and um, it's. Um, I think these people think that they're doing the world a favour and they're not. And they're not. Like, they're really not. It's you're, you're literally taking people's voices away because you don't like. Again, sorry to keep going back to Gervais. Just because you're offended doesn't mean you're right. Yeah. And that's true. He always says, how dare you? What is that thing he says? How dare you get... Uh, a f a he always says about the... The nut allergy. Yeah. He says, a woman uh, tweeted me and went, uh, 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 you shouldn't joke about that. My daughter has that. And Ricky Chavez is like, but I make jokes about the Holocaust. Holocaust, Holo Holocaust and yeah. I make jokes about cancer. And then the woman went, well, the Holocaust didn't kill kids. And he's like... Oh. Common sense. It, man, it's just... Everything <clears throat> that you joke about, cancer... I mean, I, I loved it. I mean, this, one of the... F I watched it again last night. When his mate shown him the picture of his kid. Yeah. And he goes, oh... But you can't look to... And then he goes, oh, my God, she's fucking beautiful. <laughs> it's a joke. I have children. It doesn't exist. It does, yeah. It's... Oh, it, oh yeah. Yeah, she's, she, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck it, hell. Well, oh, one mate. of the best she's, jokes she ever said. Uh, Do you remember the joke he, he said about the, the girl who goes to play in the Oh, my God, no. Oh, go on, sorry, I've interrupted you. Go on. It's, one, it's just one of the, the missing best girl. jokes ever, yeah. Oh, it's Has genius. He been, uh, and he's eating the cereal. He's been playing in the park. Oh, she, yeah. yeah. Everything okay? Yeah. Playing with your friends? Yeah. What's the matter, lovely? Come here, and I want you to know whatever happens, it's not your fault. Yeah, yeah. What happened, love? Tell, father, <laughs> tell Dad everything. Well, I was in the park. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I was with all my friends. Okay. Yeah. And, and what happened next? Well, there was a scary man came. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's all right, love. It's all right, my love. Just remember, no matter what happens, it's not your fault, okay? It's not your fault. And then tell Dad what happened then. <laughs> well, he told me to go behind the tree. Oh, God. And what, what happened then? Oh, he, he took his thing out. Oh, God. And what happened then? Oh, nothing. I'm gonna fucking make something <laughs> out. And it's just like... And people are like, oh, that's disgusting. That must make you a pedo. It's like, how no, does that make you a pedo? It's pedophile? a joke. Right? You should say to people like that, write down how that makes you a pedo. Yeah. Write it down for me. Show me. And it'll just feel fucking nonsense. I'm sputtering and spitting everywhere. And the now. missing girl. Have you seen the, yeah. the scene? What the... Well, they said, oh, this beautiful girl. She's just... Always smiling. Yeah. Yeah, she ain't fucking smiling. I mean, <laughs> he's, exist. he's come out, apparently got a bit of slating for the last one. Uh, not Humanity, uh, the one he's just done. Yeah. Uh, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, Supernature. Supernature. Yeah. Now he's doing he, the new one. And he the new went... one is really gnarly. It's like, he, listen, I went to Supernature and I went, there's a few Did you actually go to the... Yeah, yeah, last November. Um, 
it was a, it was a few jokes I went fucking hell but yes. that's what jokes are supposed to do and everyone, and he's in a, a position Shiva, where yeah he's the goat if yeah. it's fair to say is that a cool word apparently the yeah. goat he's the goat mate yeah, he's, he's the, the goat, goat mate he's fucking goat mate yeah. he like he says about the 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 Oscars and the 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 the, the award shows I don't care yeah. Yeah. I've got 600 million in the bank. I don't care. He's funny. I thought it was a great show. Uh, I think there was a few jokes that were considered trans, but again, it's... it's um, is he your favourite? Is he your favourite comedian? Um, who, is, who else do you really rate? Just to wrap up, I just good one, really that is. Um, American and English. Ricky Gervais is up there. Um, and Bill Burr. Bill Burr is my favourite comedian. See, I'm a Bill Hicks man. Yeah, Bill Hicks is great, but Bill Burr from America is just... The amount of zero fucks he gives. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you fucking fucking doesn't give a fuck from yeah. Boston. Doesn't. Oh, fuck you. People yeah. heckle him. He's like, what the fuck's the matter with you? Like, he's great. He's amazing. Um, Ricky Gervais and Bill Burr. Larry uh, David. And also Daniel Russ, is it? Daniel Voss. Um, apologies if I butchered that. He's brilliant. He makes jokes about like relationships and how like 80% of relationships and marriages end before your 30s. And um, uh, he's, he's, geni he's genius. He's so eloquent. And last of all, favourite female comedian? Um, if I ask Ricky this, you know, he'd say. <laughs> Sarah Silverman or um, what's her name? Fuck. What is her name? Jesus. Not the book. The Australian one. The Australian girl. Um, she's hilarious. Oh my God, she's really deadpan. Oh my God, Silver. do you know the Australian, blonde Australian girl? Come on, what's her name? Blonde Australian comedian? Rebel Wilson. Oh, Rebel Wilson. But she's more of an actor though, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, but she does comedy as well. Right. I must have got that totally wrong. She's hilarious. And she's just come out, really, done a really cool thing and like, got a new missus. She's amazing. Couldn't find a prince or I, found I a actually, princess. I actually quite fancy her. I don't know why. It's yeah, there's something, something quite, you know who I... I like in, women who are in comedy. You know who I really fancy. Go on, man, who do you fancy? Uh, Chelsea Lately. She did the Chelsea Lately show. Who's that? Show me a picture. No, the, you know, the show. Blonde. Blonde. Yeah, but that means... That means blonde! She's blonde. blonde. Chelsea blonde. Lately. <laughs> she did the massive show in New York called the Chelsea Lately. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll have to, you show me a photo afterwards. 46, 48. Oh. Funny. I mean, I... Listen. Crude. Rude. Yeah, I don't want to say too much because me and Zoe Kravitz have been seeing each other yeah. for a while. She don't know yet. Um, I've been so seeing her for a while. Uh, Who's your crush? Who's your crush? Is it Zoe Kravitz? Zoe Kravitz. Um, Lenny Kravitz, you know, he, he'll text me now and then. And so that's your... Oh, that's I can't your... wait for Channing to finish with Zoe because I can't wait for you to be there. And... So 18 months time, the vision is with the light in your face, just close your eyes. It's the new joke master behind the show is you. You have a place on Saturday Night Live. You have an apartment. You're dating Zoe Kravitz. Yeah. And we go And I walk rock. into Nobu and I'm like, mate, do you remember me? You're like, yes. no, I, I'll never forget you. No. Never. <laughs> You'll be there and I'll go, mate, any chance, if before I do you an impression, Zoe wants a little touch up on her beautiful androgynous haircut. Um, uh, can you give it a touch up? And you're like, yeah. So that right is now. the vision. I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting, if, if I could put odds in the bookies, I think you're absolutely going to smash it in the next 18 months. Oh, bless you, man. You've got I thought you were going to say you've something got, about Zoe then. I was like, oh, okay. You've got all the ingredients. Yeah. It's going really well at the moment. Um, and this new thing that you mentioned earlier is coming yeah. up. That's going to be great. As I said to you, like... And you don't the, chase the, the pound now, do you? You're just doing your yeah. thing. The story was always to be behind the camera. So whether I'm, you know, recognition is lovely, but... The, the end goal, mate, is, aside from Pixar and Saturday Night Live, pay my mum's mortgage off. I grew up in a family of working class it. people. I was getting TV then, Jesus Christ. Um, it's beautiful, though. When it's sincere, it, it really does. It really is a good thing, mate. I've never yeah. chased. My dad said to me, if you chase the pound notes on, it'll run a mile. Yeah, that's a good quote. Yeah. Do what you do. Yeah. Do it well, it'll run to you. Yeah. And Marco Pierre White also said, a tree without roots is just a piece of yeah. wood. Foundation, foundation, foundation. Do what you do, do it well. It's like this whole little new thing for me. I'm learning. It's going to take me a bit more time, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah. And if you enjoy something and you get good at it, eventually someone will go, 
I like this. Yeah, yeah. And if they don't, some will, some won't, so yeah, exactly. what? Exactly. But whatever exactly. you're doing, you've got to keep doing it. Because yeah. I think it's well, I nearly, refreshing. Well, I nearly gave up last week as I'm done. And I'm at the height really? of like going to like, yeah, I'm like involved with everything at the moment. And I just went, do I want to be rich in myself or rich in ha like rich financially or rich in happiness? And as I said to you, I've got no bloody money. I've never I spend it as, as nice soon as I get a, it. Nice I, to have a few. Invest in me. Invest. It's nice. Anyone invest. out there, I think you should put at least 20, 25 million yeah. into his production company. Yeah. Get him a nice pad of New York. Yes. Flat in yes. London, next door to me. Yeah. And invest into the future of British and international comedy. Not only is a writer, he's an actor, he's listening? a musician, he's an all around. Are you listening? Guffner. <laughs> are we gonna brilliant. are we gonna go for little um little, little, Thai food? little vino and some Thai food? Yeah we are, mate. Can you just insult me before I go with that? So I'm gonna say something and can you just I know I said you should never yeah, ask somebody. That's fine. Anything for you, so mate. if I you just try to get me twenty five mil of investment, you can have twenty five mil investment. So I'm gonna uh, uh, I'm gonna babble a bit and you go, Oh come on, just I okay. just wanna finish yeah. with an insult. Okay. So how do you think how do you think I am um, I did today then in the well, interview? Well, oh fuck me. Uh, look, when I turned up First thing I noticed was Marco Pierre White was on oh, the most amazing <laughs> picture. Okay, and I thought, fuck that. I walked in, and the apartment is a fucking tip. <laughs> he has copious amounts of artwork of himself. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's fucking everywhere. <laughs> I'm looking around, I'm like, fuck me. <laughs> Doing a podcast with a fucking Aiden ensemble. <laughs> Listen, and if you ever serve me a fucking Guinness out of a can again, <laughs> listen here, I'll pull your fucking ass cheeks <laughs> over your head and turn you into a fucking sugar puff. That way you can go to any fucking Halloween fancy dress party as a fucking sugar puff whenever you want. <laughs> fucking donkey, get out. You fucking dick. <laughs> Done!